Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good evening. How are you all doing? <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, so sorry we had a big glitch today on our Instagram live session. So I and Aisha came up with the brilliant idea of doing this on Zoom and sharing the content with you on Instagram or on Facebook, wherever we are going to post this. So I think it's all for the for the for the better. It's going to be better than maybe better than what we wanted to do on Instagram, and it's going to be fuller. So we're looking on the positive side. My name is Eno Simon from Talking Early Years, and I have my very special friend which I met on Instagram. Her name is Aisha Doris Mohammed. That Aisha, it's good to have you on Talking Early Years yeah, um, platform today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hi, everyone. I apologize once again. I don't know what the problem is, but I know we have like some technical issues here in Dubai when it comes to WhatsApp and Instagram. I'm not too sure about the Instagram live, but I will find out what it is. And I'm sure we can have a repeat of this some other time. Thank you so I'm much for time. having me here. My name is Aisha, uh, Aisha Doris Mohammed. I know some people will be like, why the Doris and uh, all of that, but that's my yeah, name. Yeah, exactly. I was about to ask you yeah, why the Doris my, in the That's middle. my name anyway, Aisha Doris Mohammed. So okay. today we're here to talk about why children, toddlers especially, can't sit still, right? That's our topic for today. I yeah, will... that's our topic for today. <laughs> why, to why, why your child can't sit still? Mm -hmm. Let's not limit it to toddlers. We can talk about toddlers and take it a step yeah, higher yeah, to... if we can. Yeah, fine. Yes. Fine. Okay. Fine. So my name is okay. Aisha and I'm presently living and working in Dubai. I work with an LES Institute, Chubby Chicks Nursery here in Dubai. I started off as a classroom teacher here in Dubai and somehow along the line, I moved to the managerial position in the nursery. But along the line, I found out that my hobbies or what really makes me happy is being in the classroom. I love to teach. So when this whole pandemic thing started and we needed to go online, I was one of those teachers who happened to be working online because it's something I have always loved to do. It didn't just start like that. I started off back home as an office administrator with a school, um, Green Park Preparatory School. I started off there. And after a while, I left, went into administrative in a corporate organization. And somehow again, I found myself in a school, in an LES center working with children and I decided, okay, why don't you build on this since you keep finding yourself in this line? So I went in to do my postgraduate studies in education there in Nigeria. I did it there and decided to go into the line of academics and somehow, somehow, I found myself again in Dubai still doing the same thing, academics. And honestly, it's been an amazing journey it's been interesting. My joy is seeing how children get to discover new things. You know, when you see the smile on their face, they are able to explore and they see things like experiencing new things. There's so much joy in their faces. And you know, when parents come with like, oh, my child is this, my child is that, and you're able to assure the parents that this child will be fine. So these are the joy I derive in working with children, putting smiles on their face, and making families happy. So for me, it's something I see I am going to do over a long period of time. It's not just for going the to rest stop of my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's something I want to do and Keep centered doing. around early years, just between the four, Thank you. Of four months to 10 years. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that lovely background on your passion and your journey in education. It's lovely having you on Talking Elias platform. I'm so happy we got to meet on Instagram when we got chatting. We realized that yeah, I realized that even though you're in Dubai, we all have similarities. Our journeys are almost the same. And I know where you came from, the school that you worked in in Abuja. I know your boss, Green Park School and everything. Yeah. So it's an exciting time. Preparatory One other school, boss so. I worked with, there's another boss I worked with, Status Cloud LES Center. I saw the passion and the drive in her in which she used 
been working, Miss um, Ifoma, uh, she was so passionate about that thing she's doing. So sometimes it's not just about the money, it's the passion you see that these people put into what they are doing. Some people do it for the fun, some do it because of the money, but some people do it and you see it's all about their passion. So Miss Ifoma and Miss uh, Miss Ronke and Miss Dorcas Ikea, uh, these are three people who really pushed me like, you can be anything you want to be. You don't need to just be like, I'm a banker and remain a banker. Um, I'm a nurse and just remain a nurse. You can just think outside the box and work with it. Take it from there. So those people inspired you. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good to have yeah. people along the way that inspire us to do great things. So today we're going to go straight into the discussion of the day, which is why can my child not sit still? Aisha, we're going to go, I'm going to ask you a few questions and then you're going to just respond to it as okay. much as you can. So we can share the, we can share the, the information with people on our different platforms. So in your own opinion, Aisha, why do you think that children can't sit still? Okay, for me, what I think, the first thing we need to understand is that as children, especially, let me bring it down to toddlers, we'll take from maybe ages one to three, three to five, or three to six. On. So I'm going to start with the toddlers. I would say it's, um, they are, for toddlers, we should understand that they have a limited shelf life, which means when it comes to sitting still, asking a toddler to act like an adult becomes difficult. Because this sitting still is a process, is a skill that this child needs to acquire. Sitting is a skill. The child doesn't just wake up one day and start sitting down. So the child will sit. Remember when the child starts sitting that we use like pillows or curtains to wedge them so they don't trip or they don't fall off. So the child starts sitting. Okay, today the child is able to sit on his or her own without any support. And the next day, the child is able to move. The next day, the child is able to take steps. So it comes, it's a gradual process. It's an inborn thing. It's natural. The child cannot be still. I would rather have a child who is active than to have a child who is not active. When a child becomes active, you know, okay, when things are not going right, this child is okay. There's something wrong with this child because, you know, on a good day, this child cannot be like this because the child is an active child. So asking a toddler to act like an adult is asking for too much for me. So I can completely say that the child can completely acquire this skill with reminder from us asking them to be still. You need to sit down calm. You need to sit down. You need to be this way. You need to be this way. Constant reminder rings in their head. Oh, mommy said I should sit this way. Mommy said I should. Mommy said. So they always remember. They remember that. So many parents, uh, and we require patience. As parents and LES tutor, we require patience. You will definitely see children who will run around and you will be like, what is going on here? But that's development for that child. For toddlers, right? For toddlers, yeah. Um, be between one to two, sometimes when you say sit down here, it doesn't work. Like sit oh, down no, here, it they, they, yeah, it doesn't work. They'll sit yeah. down for a few seconds and then they're up yeah. again. They are sitting. So, but as, you can only get their attention minimum maximum three to five minutes if you get five minutes try to uh -huh. get good use of that five minutes from uh -huh. them so uh -huh. i i will say you need to check your environment first of all you need to check uh -huh. your environment how conducive uh -huh. is the environment for the child uh -huh. Uh -huh. when an environment is not conducive you don't expect the child to be still even as an adult you walk into a place, the place is not convenient, you become restless, you want to leave. Uh -huh. So for, for a child, first thing we need to check, we need to check the environment, you know, after acquiring that patience that we, we need to get 
to get them to be still and all of that because you keep telling them, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, come here, come here. You don't say it with anger, you say it with love. You preach it to them with love. You make them understand because they even want to know, why do you want me to be still? Why do I need to be still? But I need to get this toy. I need to move yeah, from this I... point to the other point. Yes. I need so, to get this story because yeah. they, they don't understand why should I be sitting yeah, why still. Should I just sit down? You, that is when you start hearing, but I want to. But miss, I need to yes. get this. But mommy, I want this. So uh -huh. we need, uh -huh. in telling them to be still, you also tell them the reason why you want them to be still at that moment. And also we should check if they're able to be still. Like, <laughs> yes, I read, but why do you want them to be still at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, there were some points I raised. Um, and I said that it can, for many parents and earliest teachers, struggling to manage children who seem to be constantly on the move. Sometimes it can be hard. It can be really, really hard. Yes, why certainly. Why, why, why is it not possible for this child to just be still and concentrate uh -huh. on one thing. It uh -huh. is only natural that toddlers are not able to sit still because it is a yeah, natural. very natural. Yeah, so absolutely, they, they have to keep practicing the sitting skill until they become pro in it or they become perfect in it. And this can only uh -huh. happen gradually. There's a yes, process. certainly. There are developmental certainly. milestone you need to check. So uh -huh. we need to, I think we, sometimes we need to share this milestone with parents so they don't get too worried or worked up. All you just need to do is just go back and check the checklist. What is he or she not doing? Or what is he or she doing? Is this right? Is this wrong? Is the child supposed to be active or not active at this age? Is the child supposed to be sitting still or not sitting still? And you know, the thing is, the, for toddlers, unconsciously, they pick up what we do, what we say, the, the act of monkey do monkey say. Whatever the monkey says, the monkey does it. And you know, they know how to mimic. The monkeys, they know how to mimic. If you want to know how the monkey mimics so well, try re reading the story of the capsule and the monkeys. They mimic everything, everything. Any gesture you do, body gesture, they also want to do it the same way you have done it. So for toddlers is what you do, they see it, they copy it. What you say, they try to mimic you, the way you say it, the way you move, and so who is to be blamed? They see you doing this thing, and they are doing it, and you want them to be still. <laughs> oh, they see you walking around and you want oh, them to yeah. sit down. So yeah. uh, why should I be sitting down? <laughs> so it's, oh. it's always like that. So and they learn through movements. They learn through movement, exploring. They want to explore everything because this is something that is new to them. Oh. They don't know what it is. They were born, they, they came into the uh, into the earth and they were on bed lying down. For some time after lying down, they are sitting. After sitting, they are crawling. The next thing is to walk. And when they are walking, they want to be everywhere. Like they want to explore everything, everything. So for me, what I would say during this period, when you notice your child is always like trying to explore, adventurous, the child is adventurous, all you need to do is child proof your environment where the child is. Safe uh -huh. proof the place. Like it's safe. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Keep anything out of their reach where they cannot uh -huh. reach it. Things you know are delicate or very dangerous. You know, put them away. But just they need uh -huh. space actually. What they need is space. Is that uh -huh. space? I remember oh, yes. I shall I shall remember when my child my my daughters were younger, I took them to a stadium, right? You know how big a stadium can be. So we, we had a, there was a program at the stadium. So I was one of those who went there early. That was like many years ago. So when I got there, I just put my toddler on. Just the, um, she just started walking, the younger one. Okay. Once her feet touched the ground, yeah. Aisha, she was all over the place. Like she wanted, to, she wanted to explore the whole stadium. She was like moving from one place to the other. So you can see that for toddlers, once they have 
space. They need space to yeah. move yeah. and they, they need, need to space. move. Yeah. Once you see them, like you, you, you can't put them in a confinement. How can no, they practice? No. And you, that's why and you can't limit pandemic. them. How can this, they practice? This pandemic period, it's not a good time for some parents. At yes. <laughs> not, I would say to parents, if you have the space, try to create different corners for them dress up corner sensory corners literacy corner numeracy corner you know create corners for them in that space when they are tired here they move to the other they place. move to so, the yeah, other side they move to the once other once they side. are engaged once they are engaged their and movement you, doesn't you, bother as a parent, you you will have peace, will have of, peace mind of mind at the end of the day because the child yes. is learning the child mm -hmm. is giving you peace the child is not mm -hmm. disturbing you no. And bef before you know it, 7, 7.30, that child is on the bed. And that child uh -huh. will have good sleep. Maximum 12 hours sleep. <laughs> because they enjoyed themselves and they they've expended all that energy. Themselves. Yes. So how they've like expended all that corners, energy. The child will be like, okay, what is, all, what is all about the sensory corners? You have the rough sensory activity smooth you know different sensory activities that these kids can actually go there on their own and do something as long as it's safe anything that's yeah. so tiny that can be no, a no, choking no. hazard keep you keep those things away yes. the reason why you keep those things that are so tiny that could be a choking hazard away so that you can have peace of mind that's okay. one yeah. number two so that your child you are sure that your child is it's safe, safe. Good. If your child isn't safe, there's no peace of mind for you. Yeah. So make sure that there are no tiny or small objects Object. that your toddler can pick yeah. up. Yeah. Let the place be, like I always say, let the environment be well prepared. Let it be safe. safe. Let it be secure. Safe. Spacious. Safe. If safe. you don't, Aisha, if they don't have spacious environment, they have a small house. What they can they do? What can parents do? Okay, for a small house, where you have a small house, we have recycled materials. As I speak to you, I have lots of recycled materials in my kitchen, in the washroom. Why do I keep these things? Because there are times that the child, my daughter wants to do some activity. What you need to do, show her a, bit, a video of what she wants to do. Now, most of the things my daughter does is she tells you what she wants to do. She has like a phone or a tablet where she gets to watch the thing. I'm telling you the truth. I can sit down one hour, have my meeting, and she will not disturb because she has her pencil with her, she has her crayons. You can see her making sketches. It might not look beautiful, but she will tell you what she's doing. When you ask her at the end of the day, she can tell you what she's doing, that she drew a lion. This is a lion, this is a penguin, this is a dinosaur, yeah. this is you. But I know I have my peace of mind. I just tell her, okay, I need to do something now. I need you to be on your own and do what you need to do. How old is she? She's five. So she's she's so she's within the bracket that we're yes. talking about. Yes, so she understands now the that bracket. I need, and you know, the uh, maximum time between um, three to five years is around 20 to 25 minutes. They can sit on their own within 20 to 25 minutes. Once they're engaged in engaged, something interesting. Yes, yes. Even but if I'm they're having, not engaged, yeah. they're going when to I'm be all over the place. Online classes. She has a table and a chair. I just give her something to do. And is it that she's sitting on her own doing what she wants to do? Or she's in the, in the room and I'm in the living room. So you get them so, engaged in a good way that becomes uh -huh. productive. You know uh -huh. she's not missing out on anything. And you are no. not like, oh, I need to go back to work with this child. No. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> Yes, certainly, Aisha. Now, we've talked about toddlers and children, typical typical children, how they work, how they need, children need space to walk around and yeah. toddlers especially need to practice that skill. Yeah. And they're very curious. Once you make the place um, um, safe, safe and safe. special yeah. enough, they, they, they can stay on an activity for a long time. It, oh, yeah. now, if they stay on one, it's not, if they are not satisfied, they move, they to, move another, to, the to, to another so one. So if, it, for small houses and uh, people who stay in like yes. small, get this recycled materials, go online, check for things. It's, it, it sounds like it's, um, it's so much of a big deal. Honestly, if you, 
I don't know, maybe it's the passion in me. So for me, it's not a big deal. These are things that I can quickly check, you know. Even if you're not an LES tutor, you can just go online, check for activities for one to two years. It could be sensory activity. There are water play. The weather is getting hot. Oh, for us here, it's really hot now. So they can do water play. You don't need to go to a big swimming pool to do water play. You can do as long as you keep you, as long as you keep yeah. as it long is, as you keep as eagle as eye supervision on that child. Yeah. With water play, you need to keep eagle eye supervision on the child oh, yeah. because so children so can. Uh, yeah. Be, uh, water that is too much. Just put water in it. Yeah. Feed them animals. They could do uh, washing the muddy animals, washing cars. You are also enhancing their fine motor skills by engaging them in these activities. So it's not just that, oh, just go and play. No. You are enhancing their finger muscles because for some and of them, one to, two, yeah, one to two years, their grips are not firm yet. Uh -huh. So the moment they are a play doh is another thing you can give to them. Edible play doh. Children love play doh. They love play doh. Ask them to make anything with play doh. They will do it. Very, very, very interesting. Now, these are the normal developmental milestones and yes. patterns for children. The things that are expected of children. Are there some? Are there some? reasons some other reasons why children can't sit still besides the normal developmental oh, track yeah, yeah. are there other reasons there might be some reasons but i want us to look at this thing you know sometimes people are quick to say uh, a child can't sit still or the child cannot pay attention uh they quickly reach out to say okay this child is hyperactive this child has uh, like adhd without checking uh -huh. how do you know this child has ADHD, uh -huh. attention deficit hyperactive disorder. How do you know? Uh -huh. Only a therapist can tell you that. Uh -huh. I cannot tell you that. I will only observe yeah. the child. I will observe uh -huh. the child, give you my observation reports. Uh -huh. And if you need to see a therapist, you need to go see a therapist. Now, these uh -huh. children, most of them are they are confined to like uh, not being still or not sitting still because of very little little things that we take for granted. Uh -huh. If a child has a routine like moving around, the child, a three, four years old knows that my routine in the morning, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I take my uh -huh. food, I get ready for school, I need to go to school if I need to go to school. And when I get uh -huh. into the class, especially in the classroom, they know what their routine is. Uh -huh. The moment you don't take them to the play area, there is going to be a problem. <laughs> because they because miss that they know step of the happens. day. So it's just like an adult. You know, I wake up in the morning. If I don't go to the gym or I don't do my morning exercise, my brain uh -huh. is not booted. Uh -huh. The same thing for children. So let's look at those points which I raised, those points I said, um, uh -huh. the underlying factors aside the natural one that we are yeah. looking at. I jotted yeah. out some of my points. I jotted them down somewhere. Yes, I think, yeah. So the first one is your child's high level of activity where you say your child postural muscles might not be able to uphold him for an extended period of period. time. We have muscles that are powerful for a short time and responsible for fast burst of movements. That's the fast burst muscles. That's the one that prompts you to quickly move into action. You just, you know, before you're sitting with a child, before you know it, something just prompts that child and the child is up on his feet and out of the door. And you're like, oh, he was just here. Now, for children like that, the children who move around because their muscles can't hold them upright, they rely on that fast burst muscles. It's something sudden and energetic, like I said, you immediately, which is why they need to move. 
We need to support them to build their core strengths. That way, they overcome these challenges so that they start staying still. So you need to support them. How? How do you do that? It's a gradual thing. You need to tell the child why the child needs to sit down. You need to help them exercise those muscles. They need to move. They need to move around. So when it's time for play area, 20, 30 minutes, you take them. They don't need to be at the play area for a long period of time. They are exercising those muscles. So the longer they stay without doing that, those movement, those exercise, that is when you see them, they become hyper. They start moving around. They become edgy. They become itchy like, oh, something is... You now start wondering... Oh. Uh, diapers are not wet, the child just ate, the child just drank water, so what is the problem? But because that muzzle has not been exercised. Not developed properly at all. to hold them up. Because yes. that muscle is usually around the abdomen, the pelvis, and the back. The back. A lot, yeah. The so back. a lot of so exercise, a lot of movement. To be done. So it's not something uh -huh. that will take them one hour. Just little by little, you just stretch it. Little by little, you keep stretching it and that's it just by keeping them yeah. keeping them very Keep active the giving them activities that allows them to exercise yeah. those muscles yeah. true take a child Good. outside for 10 minutes and bring the child inside the child is calm confining them to a space is a problem you can't do that yeah. for so long yeah so you need big to problem stretch mm -hmm. them help them exercise those there are things they cannot do on their own, but because you know it, you have to help them take walks, make them run, make them jump, you know, do this um, balancing exercise where they have to stand, you know, stretch out their arms and their arms and move, you know, just something simple to keep them together. Okay. Like, what other what other reason? <laughs> so a child may not be able to turn down the volume on setting sensation sensation yes our environment is full of sensations they are unimportant to how we function and how we survive most of us are able to ignore adults are able to ignore and pay attention to the most important one but for children they are not able they cannot even identify which is important or which is not important so the ability to filter might be part of the problem because they are not able to filter which of the sensation they are supposed to attend to and which not to attend. It becomes a problem and they are all over the place because they cannot filter it. They can't filter it. So what if a child cannot turn down the volume on sight, sound, touches and feelings that are part of their environment, they may be over-oriented to sound, they become over-oriented to sound and uh, a visual input in their environment and feel the need to investigate everything. They want to now know everything because they are not able to filter anything. So that inquisitiveness comes in. Your, your, your volume, your volume. Okay, so yes, I was saying, I was saying that because they are being exposed to different stimuli in the environment, yes. they cannot differentiate. They cannot filter which one they want to listen to or which one they shouldn't. Yes. So they begin to respond to everything, everything. at the same time. Investigate, so, explore everything yes. at the same time. So, so they, they become here, overstimulated. They, they become overstimulated. So that is why it's not good to make your environment too overstimulated you don't have too many bright colors no no no, no. even though there's down. a kind there's a Tone there's a kind down. of music you should play if you play just those hippie hypey music you see it, it affects the way children feel and, and they begin to move around but that's way like Aggressive yeah but if you play all of that. yeah if you play very calm music i've heard that if you play very calm music even helps you, so it suits your nerves yeah, okay. and makes like, you feel uh, more relaxed. What we do in, 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 in the school, every Wednesday, it's called Wellness Wednesday for us. And what do we do Wellness Wednesday? We do yoga with the kids. We do painting. It's more of 
a relaxed day for the children to do activities how they want it in a different way. They do, and how do we achieve this? We have like music we play for them on that day at the background. It's just so soothing, so calm. And you see everybody, even you as a tutor, you will be so like, oh, this is, these kids are having fun. Like you want to be a child again. So you need to <laughs> understand who you're dealing with, what they need, what sensation do they need for that environment and at that time. Okay, so we're saying don't overstimulate your no, environment. No, don't make it very all. noisy. Very no, no, Even when you're talking no. about colorful, let it not be like contrasting, oh, no. sharp colors. It can turn, colors. yeah, it can turn to, it can trigger that. In as much as. Um, that, that need to move around. In as much as they love colors, but there's a way the color becomes, when it becomes too much, they're like, they don't even see the beauty. Yeah. They like what's happening the, here. <laughs> yeah. They don't see the beauty of what you have done at uh -huh. all. They don't get to, to see it. Uh -huh. So, you know, these things are part of the things we need to pay attention pay to. Pay attention you to. Know, support them as they desensitize their body, you know, to helping them concentrate on tasks. You know, we need to help them too. You know, uh -huh. we need to calm them down, calm them down and help them to concentrate on tax and learn and learn whatever tax they are doing completes not that the child starts the tax that's another conversation for another day for children to be able to start and complete a task yeah. that's another skill yeah. skill to learn for yeah. another conversation is so, very, and a very falls, very important one it falls one. under the sensation it falls under yeah the, it falls under uh -huh. so for the third one i would say your child may not be getting enough sensory inputs from their vestibular processing system which is known as the movement and balance so if they are not getting enough sensory processing system it becomes a problem it becomes a problem when they don't get enough of it the system so if they get too much is a problem if they yes. get too little is so a problem so they it always has to be a balance yeah according to the child's age you need to know what is appropriate for that child. Just the same way we have appropriate learning materials for age groups is the same thing here. Don't give too much, don't give too little. It shouldn't be less, it shouldn't be too much. It should be moderate, cut across border. It should be uh -huh. moderate. So for, for me, this system is located in the inner ear and it gives us information about moving. If your child is one of many kids who seem to be constantly swinging on their chairs, rocking back and forth, jumping up and down and rolling, rolling around on the floor, their body may be seeking, your child's body may be seeking, I think I wrote it somewhere, yeah, this kind of impute in order for the child to feel calm. The sensory, that's the sensory processing system, movement and balance. Movement and balance. This is, like we said, is the system located in the inner ear that gives us information about how we move, about space, and how we are able to manage the space. So if your child is not getting enough of these inputs, this is an order that the child is suffering from. So you need to check that if the child is getting enough or not getting at all. So is it that the child is getting too much or not getting at all? How would the parent know? If a parent does, how would the parent know about what's happening in the ear and if what's happening in the what movement that and balance child, system? If your child is one of those kids who is always sitting on the Swinging chair, back and forth. back and forth, jumping and rolling around on the floor. So you see, these are things that we can actually control our on our own without saying that the child is hyperactive. Mm -hmm. Before you start running to go and... Because I have seen most children and they'll be like, oh, it's a special need. But by the time you start with the child, 
the child is able to communicate. For me, when a child is able to communicate, the, especially when it comes to communication and language, and that child is not five yet, I always tell parents there is nothing wrong with the child. The child pace might just be slow. The learning pace or the developmental pace of that child might just be slow. Now, you need to check yourself as a parent too. Are you high? Are you uh, uh, on the, how do I put it now for parents? Because what I do, I segment my class into three. High achievers, average, and the low achievers. That way you know how to work with this child. Mm, that, that's differentiation for yeah. you to be able to manage your manage classroom so classroom. that's easy. Yeah, yeah so easy. it's but easy. But when you have a child who is sitting, jumping, throwing, and all of that, you know where to place the child and you know how to work with the child. There's a time when it becomes too long and it's too much. And so if parents get concerned, I think the best thing, instead of you to yeah, slam a label on the child, yeah see, yeah, see a special needs person that can assess the child. But if yeah, the child, assess the child and tell you what's up. True. Like I said, as long as the child is able to communicate, the child, because these children know what you're saying. They understand you. They just have their own two different personality when they're at home and when they're in school. <laughs> yeah. When they're at home, they know they can get away with anything. But when they're in the school... They know they need to do this. They need to follow in routine. They will follow routine. So when parents see these habits or these threats in their children, you know that your child may not be getting enough sensory inputs. Stimulation, yeah. yeah. So you need to work on that. You need to yeah. really, really work on that. So and it's just like think of an adult who feel right unless they start like i explained to you an adult who wakes up in the morning and doesn't feel right that oh, my day is not going well because i didn't do this first thing in the morning <laughs> for those who take coffee i didn't take coffee or those yeah. who exercise i didn't you run know, today so, or know, those who do this we at work and we're like ah, today i feel um i don't know why i'm getting tired lightheaded yeah, i have uh -huh. and i was like maybe there's something out of our routine that we have just missed not done yeah so so when we take these things when we do this thing we just notice that the brain begins to work well and everything just fall in sync everything falls in sync so I will but if it that. becomes an issue for parents the, the advice is let a special needs person a assess your child a specialist yeah as, as, but if as, it's not as an crazy, issue as crazy as it sounds a child who can't still still might just be seeking movement in order to feel better. Stable. Just, yeah, just move around. Like I said, just five, ten minutes, just allow them exercise themselves. And most times don't tell them it's time to come back in. They get tired and they come back. Okay. Because the moment you start telling them, no, it's you need to go back, you need to, you see them, they say, I but I still want to stay, I still want to do this, I still want to do this. So even if there's, even if we have to follow routine, there's a time for everything, but oh, there's yes. also a time to be flexible. Yes. Yes. You know, that, there's yes. also a time to be flexible. Let children have that extra little time. time. There are some times when you need to just stick to it and say, okay, it's time for this. Yeah. I'm and promise, so, I'm promise that you will have another opportunity yeah. to, you, you know, to play around and explore. True, true. You now start being like, okay, don't worry, you'll get to do it another time. We're still coming out tomorrow, the next day. You still come out again. It's okay, clean up now and let's go in. And you see them, they're excited because you've promised them that there will be a repeat of it the next day. So okay, Aisha. <laughs> yes, certainly. So we're looking at two things now. Natural progression of development for children and, and sometimes when there might be and uh, there might be an underlying issue so in summary now i wanted to just give like closing words for what should be the natural thing that happens for children that parents should look out for and not be worried when should a parent be worried okay if you feel your child is not sitting still and your child is not three yet it's not something to be worried about 
It's not anything to be worried about. It's just natural. It's for you to take out the time to be able to speak with the child, you know, let them know why you want them to do this, why you want them to sit down, you know, and remember that motivation is a huge drive to attention. You need to motivate them. Uh, some children can sit down to play Lego for longer hours and some cannot. Some cannot do it. It's not because they don't want to do it, but there might just be something wrong, which we have, you know, just taken for granted. So it is advisable. It's not only teachers that should look out for what is wrong in a child. Parents also should look out for what is wrong in a child and bring it to, you know, bring it out like, I noticed this. You speak up about this and not just keep quiet. You notice it the first time, the second time, you can say something about it. So for me, I would say parents should try to secure their environment. If you have space, like I said, movement is a major, 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 major thing when it comes to development. It's one of the um, learning areas, the physical development. The child needs to move. The child needs to stretch. The muscles need to be exercised. For these muscles to extend longer time, they need to be stretched. It cannot be stiff. So you need to help them, you know, make a routine for them even at home. Take them on walks. Make them do exercise. Engage them. Try to create corners where they can, you know, play. If you have different corners, make the corners in different areas, not in the same place. You can have your, like I said, the sensory corner, have it, make your, uh, if you have children who are not up to four or five, in fact, if your kids are still up to five, you should have like a mini nursery in your home. When people come in, they'll just know, oh, this one has a child. Because you need to engage the child. The child cannot just sit down. You, it's, it's going to be difficult. So we need to work together. You need to do these things. It's, at, it's, it's easy. You can go online. You can check these things. DIY activities you can do with your kids at home. They can't get all the training from school. They will get a lot from home. So we need to, you know, look at, um, um, take, be cautious of the way we speak, the things we do around them. So for me, I think it's, it's so easy. It's easy. It's when you see signs that you know naturally, these signs are not natural signs. That is when you start panicking. You start getting that's, worried. That's, that's very true. Yeah. So that's very true. If you have In a the child next who is few... three years and the child is not writing, it is not a problem. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. I don't know. People make it an issue. For me, it's not an issue. What you need to check, what are the uh, developmental milestones, physical development of this child, and his, the pencil grip, is he firm? Is he able to color? Is he able to sketch? Are they able to shred using baby scissors? Those are the things you should get worried about and um, their communication and language. Is your, is your child expressive? Can the child express him or herself? And not that the child is not sitting still. This is, this is just natural. It's natural anywhere. One to five years. Wow. Until the child gets to six years, that is when you, the child becomes like fully, fully conscious of their environments, of themselves. They become aware of, oh, I need to be like this. Oh, I need to do like this. But when the child is barely... Um, for from maybe from less okay let's say from eight months to five years please just take it easy give them a slack take it easy yeah. aisha says aisha says please just take it easy, take it easy. just let the we children need, move there are times when it gets to me and i'm like you need to sit down calm you need to be quiet you need to be this and the truth is that from the moment you wake up in the morning from the moment the child wakes up in the morning you will talk till the child goes to bed <laughs> As long as the child is with you at home, you will talk, but you just need to like be patient. It takes patience. It takes patience. Wow. It takes patience, wow. you know, and whatever you do, just do it out of love with them. They understand. They know. Mm -hmm. There are times mm -hmm. when they will, 
you know, they just go away. They have done something and you are like, but I asked you to sit down still. They will go away and come back and give you a hug and say, I love you. <laughs> and just peck you and just go away. But that's why they are children. So we just that's need why to, they're children. Yeah, we just need to take it easy, take it easy and just be calm with them and put on the gamut of patience and just <laughs> So, oh, yeah. so you're saying in essence, patience is key. Oh, yeah. Patience is key. So we've heard a lot from Miss Aisha this evening. She's poured out a lot of tips and ideas for parents and educators out there who have who are working with children from bed to five. So Aisha is saying, once a child is between one to three and they're moving around, please don't give yourself a headache. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing. Don't worry. Make it fun, keep them engaged, create some corners in your home, yeah. um, set up a playroom. Like I did, I've been doing some lovely playrooms for some parents in Abuja and the kids wow. are loving it. Every time I go there, the thing is almost the same and as new as ever and the children love it. Parents who come in and say, oh, I love this playroom. So Aisha is also saying, yeah. Aisha is also saying, set up a playroom. Let that be a place that's dedicated for your children. You may not safe. have to feel it. Yeah, you may not have to fill it up with so much. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that there is a place where you can have some easily accessible material, recycled yeah, materials. Yeah, especially moving it, materials that you can yes. change. You know, this yes, week you can, can change. change it. Make it yes. team. You can have a team mm -hmm. this week. Check what's happening. Yeah. What's the season? What's happening around the world now? You know, make yeah. something for them and just allow them to and just have, have, fun. Fun. have fun when it becomes an issue when you know that um the child has passed a certain age and the behavior doesn't seem like typical yeah. what's typical then you you, you know the red flag and then you can cons consult a specialist don't label your child don't don't assume anything go to the go to the um, special needs um person to check to do, to also to do an assessment, assessment to tell you sometimes yeah. you sometimes you may be worried that my child has this but when you go and do a special needs assessment there may be nothing, nothing they just either. tell you oh this or this or that because True. i've had experiences of working with children with special needs and sometimes it's nothing but sometimes it may be something, something. and when you when you when you um identified early early enough you're able to provide the early intervention to support that child so in the next few weeks i'm going to call in special um, special needs um people who are specialists in working with children with special needs or any kind of disability to talk about um what to how to identify what are the signs what should what should parents see that would make them worried, worried what should give them concerns what should be the red flags so a special needs um, educator or a therapist will come in on talking early years to tell us what the signs are what should what we should what notice and, and be worried yes and then what we can do about it so that we're not just working ourselves up for something that may that may not be an issue so parents teachers all over the world. We today we had a lovely guest from Dubai. Oh my Instagram live the Instagram live did not let us go on live, but we are here. We are going to share this video on the Instagram live uh, on our Instagram pages and Facebook and maybe YouTube, and people get to watch it. Thank you so much, Aisha Doris Mohammed. Sorry, mm -hmm. please. There's something I wanted to say. I wanted to okay. say that uh, people who work directly with children should at all times use the best practice. And what's the best practice? Think it, say it, write it, and read it. <laughs> That's a teacher for you. So you have, it, you have to think it before you say it. And after mm -hmm. saying it, you have to write it. Then you read mm -hmm. it. So that way, you know you are in line. So, thank you so thank much for those so last much. words. Thank you so it's much. It's good for having you on here. The Instagram live worked, but that's a problem. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Say hi to your baby and say hi to everyone in Dubai. <laughs> whenever, whenever I come to Dubai, I'll check you out. No problem. Okay. No problem. No all problem. right. Thank you. Thank you Not, so much. All right. Bye, everyone. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.